Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade six, unit six, lesson four, practice problems review. Question one, select all the equations that describe each situation and then find the solution. Kieran's backpack weighs three pounds less than Claire's. Claire's backpack weighs 14 pounds. How much does Kieran's backpack weigh? Well, one way of looking at this is saying if I have Kieran's backpack, KB, to make it equal to Claire's backpack, Claire's backpack um, is three pounds more. So if I take Kieran's backpack and add three to it, that'll get me to Claire's. In other words, uh, Kieran's was three pounds less, so if I add three, that's equal to uh, Claire's. And so what don't we know? We don't know Kieran's. So basically, Kieran's backpack plus three is equal to Claire's, which is 14. And Kieran's is our unknown, and so K plus three is equal to 14. And I see an equation right here that matches that. K plus 3 equals 14. Now, well, 3x equals 14. You're not taking 3 and multiplying by Kieran's backpack. We're not dividing by 3 either. If we look at uh, the three i's here, does x equal 14 minus 3? Sure, because if I take 14 and subtract 3, I get 11, and 11 plus 3 is 14, and so that works. In B, each notebook contains 60 sheets of paper. Andre has five notebooks. How many sheets of paper do Andre's notebooks contain? It's five notebooks. Each contains 60. So his total is represented by 5 times 60. In other words, 5 times 60 equals x. When looking at the equations, can I do 60 divided by 5 to get that? No. And instead of x here, let's just turn that into a y to make that match. Does y equal 5 times 60? That's exactly what I did. Does 5y equal 60? 5 times y equals 60? No. Now, does y divided by 5 equal 60? Does the amount of paper he have divided by the five notebooks equals 60 sheets per notebook? Yes, it does. And now to find this, just take five times 60 and get 300 equals y. And it can go back and check that too and say, well, yeah, 300 divided by five is 60. Now question two, we're solving each equation. So two times x equals five. Well, if I divide by two on both sides here, I'll get x equals basically two and a half. y plus one and eight tenths equals 14 and seven tenths. Well, if I subtract one and eight tenths on both sides here, I'll get y equals 11 and nine tenths. And c, six equals half times z. Well, half of what is six? You can ask yourself that and just get 12 or you can multiply by 2 here on both sides and get 12 equals z because half times 2 is 1z and that cancels out, which is what you want. Next, 3 and a fourth equals half plus w. Well, I need to move that 1 half to the other side. So if I subtract 2 fourths, that's the same thing as 1 half, right? So if I subtract 2 fourths from both sides, say I borrow here, that's 2, add f uh, 4 to that, that's 5 fourths, 2 and 5 fourths is the same thing as 3 and 1 fourth. I know I did a lot of math in a short amount of time there, but uh, 5 fourths minus 2 fourths is 3 fourths, and we have 2 and 3 fourths equals W. And sure enough, if you just think logically through that, 2 and 3 fourths um, plus 2 fourths, which is the same thing as 1 half. Uh, is 2 and 5 fourths, which is 3 and a fourth. And then lastly, 2 and 5 tenths times t equals 10. Well, if I divide by 2 and a half on both sides here, 10 divided by 2 and a half is equal to 4. So t equals 4. Now, for each equation, draw a tape diagram that represents the situation. 3 times x equals 18. Well, 
I take my tape and divide it into three equal parts of x, and that's going to equal 18. By the way, x equals 6 there, huh? Next, 3 plus x equals 18. I take my tape diagram, divide it into an x and a 3, that's going to equal 18. And by the way, doesn't x equal 15 there? Then, 17 minus 6 equals x, a little more challenging, right? But essentially, if I have an x and I have a 6, that's going to add up to be 17. x equals 11 here, huh? 11 minus, uh, or sorry, sorry, 17 minus 6 is equal to 11, so that worked. And so as we go to number 4, find each product. We have two things here to multiply. We have 21 and 2 tenths times 2 hundredths. Well, 21 and 2 tenths is the same thing as 212 tenths times 2 hundredths. And so if I take 212 and multiply by 2, 4, 2, 4, 10, we have 424 over 10 times 100 is 1,000. And so now, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. The four, the two, the four, zero for the ones place. We have 424 thousands. And our second one, two and five hundredths, so 205 hundredths, multiplied by four tens, hundreds, thousands. So if we multiply out 205 times 4, 20, 2, 8, you get 820, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, so 820 hundred thousands. I guess that makes sense, 100 times 1,000 is 100,000. So we have our ones place, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, backfilled, zero, the two, the eight, and then zeros in the hundredths and tenths and one spot. So we have a solution here of 820 hundred thousandths. Lastly, for a science experiment, students need to find 25% of 60 grams. Jada says, I can find this by calculating a fourth of 60. Anders is 65% of, I'm sorry, 25% of 60 means 25 hundredths times 60. Lynn says both their methods work. Do you agree with Lynn? Yes. And quite simply, 25 over 100 simplifies to 1 fourth. I mean, it's, it's true, it's right, it's correct. That's it for this practice questions review. Good luck.